Hi, I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we take a look back at the Bassmaster Championship on Lake St. Clair. Get ready for the Novi Equestrian Expo, and then we lose ourselves in the aisles of one of the largest used and rare bookstores in the country, so stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. Oh, oh! No, don't you do it. Here on Clinton, Metro Parks, Lake St. Clair is one of the best spots in the country for bass fishing, or angling as the pros say it. And bass masters ought to know because they're the pros and they bought the Super Bowl of bass fishing right here to the D. great family event and it's set up right along the canal so kids can come out and see what the fishing's all about, get excited, root on for their favorite angler. It's just a good time. It is really cool just to be here in the Detroit metropolitan area because you know people don't really expect us to the Bass Masters, the best fishing tour in the world to come to Detroit and we're here and it's yeah. really cool to be here and, and highlight the destination and highlight what a fantastic fishery this is out here. Lake St. Clair is actually rated the best bass lake in the country by Bassmaster Magazine, it's one of our publications and it's just a fantastic fishery, a lot of big small mouths. You go out there and they're just going for the biggest fish, that's the, the goal. Well, the five biggest fish per day okay. and so, so it's, a, it's a four day tournament, mm -hmm. 100 English fish on Thursday and Friday, we cut the field to, to 50 on Saturday and 12 on Sunday. The weights carry over each day. Once you catch your fifth fish, you can keep fishing and try mm -hmm. to catch another one and change them out. What's called culling, and and you know guys are catching you know around 20 pounds a day to, to lead the tournament. About 41 pounds is leading the tournament right now mm -hmm. as we head into the third day. So you could think we might get around 80 pounds of fish for uh, to, to win the tournament for a four day, which is a great for smallmouth. There's a process. They There's keep a, the it's fish a very alive. Important, very right? important process, and conservation is key. In fact, bass actually invented really back in the early 70s catch and release fishing. We were the first tournament organization to do that. Okay. So we want to make sure we keep those fish alive, we bring them back. So as quickly as the process goes, they'll get the fish out alive well and they'll bring them back backstage. We'll check them for how many of the fish they have, make sure they're the right size, mm -hmm. make sure that they're alive and uh, they, they go up on stage, we'll weigh the fish quickly, we'll bring them back to a, a set of volunteers that will run the fish back to our release boats. And our release boats are, are, are basically pontoon boats okay. that have been rigged up so they, we put water in them, that mm -hmm. the lake water that comes in them, we'll put them back in the water and into, into the, the release boat. We'll go back into the middle of the lake and we'll, we'll, we'll open some trap doors, and they'll go back in there and they'll go back to their homes and then somebody else can, fit, can catch them the next day. And with Bass Masters being the biggest organization in the world when it comes to fishing and the, the best tournaments that there are, the best anglers that are fishing here, coming to Lake St. Clair is kind of a, kind of a stamp of approval, so to speak. Right. That, hey, if the pros fish there and I may live in Arkansas or in Missouri or in Alabama mm -hmm. and I want to try to fish smallmouth, I'm going to come here to, 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 to Detroit. I've been to Augusta National, but I haven't, I haven't golfed on it. Mm -hmm. I've been to Yankee Stadium, but I haven't played baseball on it. Mm -hmm. You could do that here. So it is a really family friendly event. They've got these little kids out here teaching them young how to start fishing. They've got this display set up. Look at they're trying to get the lure in the mouths of the blow up there. All right, so this is fun. They've got another opportunity for you to come out and practice your fishing skills. So someday you can be out there. Catching the bass in the in the tournament, huh? Are you rooting for anybody in particular? You know, there's four Michigan uh, people. Oh, got to go for Kevin Van Dam, right? He's a local that's, boy. That's what I've heard. Right, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right here in Kalamazoo, I do believe. Yes, it is. It's exciting, huh? Very this exciting. This is really neat. More than what we expected. Yeah, totally. this is awesome. Man. It's awesome. And and you guys got your fishing nets. Are you boys fishermen? Yeah, you are. And look at you got your hand sign. That's another thing. The fishermen are real fan friendly, aren't they? Very. Yeah, they sure are. So the time is counting down. They only have until 3:15 to come in. You can see everybody's lined up along the docks, waiting for them. They give them a big woohoo. They come out. It's really exciting. And we got another guy coming in right here. So this is the process. They've got live fish in that bag and they're going to bring it over here toward the weigh-in counter. It's going to go from tank to tank and stay alive till they actually weigh it. We've got the live bass in there. There he goes. 
quick to the tank. So as you can see, they've got these tubs set up along here. They've each got about five fish, five bass in their bags, and they're kept alive. They're filled with lake water until they actually get weighed, which is happening right over there in that big tub. What's really exciting too is once they weigh in, the fishermen, they come out here, they interact with the fans, they're approachable, they tell you about their experiences, they're signing autographs, shaking hands, taking pictures with little kids. They're just great fan friendly. Fishing's amazing. I mean, yeah. there's not many places you can catch as many fish as you can here. The fish right now are getting into schools and they school up according to size usually, and so you gotta find those fish. And once you do, you just gotta figure out how to catch them. I'm usually drop shot in a Berkeley twitch tail minnow. It's a little three inch bait, really easy for a small mouth to eat, and uh, you just gotta get it down in front of them. And just, uh, and then cross your fingers. And cross your fingers <laughs> that they eat it and set the hook. Uh, I've been here a bunch of times. It's yeah. one of my favorite lakes in the whole country. Uh, you know, it might as well be my home lake. Yeah, I come over here every chance I can, so yeah. it's a, a great, great fishery. What's the secret? Um. Just lots and lots of time on the water. That's, I mean, that's the best thing. In order to get better, you just gotta go out and uh, practice more. He's been an incredible angler of the year. So now it's a really exciting part. We get to find out where they were placed. From Kalamazoo, Michigan, seven times part of Bassmaster Angler Year. superstars of bass angling, Kevin Van Dam. You're a Michigander. And what do you think about Lake St. Clair? Well, you know, I've been fishing here for 20 some odd years and this lake is, uh, it's incredible. You know, it, it, it uh, has just a huge population of a lot of different species, but yeah. my favorite is smallmouth bass. You know, I mean, you can catch largemouth bass here. I mean, it's great for walleye, perch, muskie and all that, but I come here for the smallmouth bass. It is, in my opinion, the greatest smallmouth fishery in the world. You know, Bassmaster ranked it the number one bass lake in the country. So you got to find where the bait's at and what they're feeding on to match that with a, with a lure and you're going to catch them. I mean, that's the one thing about this lake is they're always out there to be found. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've heard it from the pros. Lake St. Clair out of here in Clinton Metro Park is not only great for bass fishing, in fact, so great that they brought their tournament here, but it's also a great place for family fun. Well, you can do all that and more at the Novi Equestrian Expo at the Suburban Collection Showplace. Yeehaw! Well, Blair, nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. Welcome back. This is a pretty unique event, an equestrian show. Yes, indeed. Anything that has to do with horses is here in the facility. Now, you know, I was reading that we have an abundant amount of horses in southeastern Michigan. I wasn't yes. aware there were so many. Well, you know, and all over Michigan for sure, but people don't realize in southeastern Michigan, even in the uh, more urbanized area, yeah. equestrian activities are still a major part of people's activities. We actually have a model horse area, so, you know, people that like to collect and do those types of things. Wow. We have a lot of entertainment that's geared towards the whole entire family. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have, you know, different exhibits, different displays for people to buy and see things and so forth. And activities for the kids in the, in the youth pavilion, we have pony rides, uh, the, you know, the bull riding and all of that they can do here at the Equestrian Show. And you're actually going to have a rodeo inside. Yes, indeed. We actually doubled the size of our main arena this year, built it to certain specifications for a rodeo. Mm -hmm. uh, they brought in all the cage and gear area and uh, built out a full-blown rodeo arena. So the And that's a sanctioned event for the Michigan High School Rodeo Association. It's actually in conjunction with the National uh, High School Rodeo Association. Wow. And we have, even have participants from Canada coming in. Oh my goodness, this yeah. is big, big indeed, time. <laughs> indeed. And it's all uh, part of the price for the, the ticket to the show. Too. Okay, all right. So, well, can we take a look around and see some of the uh, exhibitors and uh, the Absol fun little things to do? Absolutely, love to do it. 
Okay, so it's a mini mania. What does that mean? These people are maniac about their <laughs> little horses. They're well, adorable. Some might call them crazy, but actually this is a great feature of the show. And all these are mini actual horses, so and they, the owners decorate them all up. And it's all for display and all for show. So are you allowed to go up and then pet the horses? Absolutely. Oh. You guys all look adorable. <laughs> I love the flower and the, the, ba the bags. This is a learning process that we take out to schools for teaching kids how to, what barns were all about. Mm -hmm. This is an actual uh, eighth scale of a barn that's out in uh, Wisconsin. We teach the kids how to put it together. They learn the heritage of what barns are about. Okay, so like model cars, people are also building model horses. Is that what's going on here? Well, a lot of them are uh, made by Briar Manufacturing, and then we have a lot that people can customize or called artist resins, where they're, a lot of them are one of a kind that they customize and paint. The detail is, is quite... Uh, so no, quite so they're big. being judged at this point. Absolutely. Yep, yep, they're setting up and getting ready for judging, mm -hmm. and they can earn uh, national recognition and cards that allow them to go to the national competition once a year. Wow! So this is acrobats and horse riding combined. Right, this is uh, the Rack Riders vaulting team. They can do all kinds of, you know, riding acrobatics and then also on the vaults, the, the, the steady vaults themselves. Just a lot of fun. And the kids are really, really talented. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you for coming. I, I see there's very a much. lot to discover, so I'm going to go take a look at my own, okay? Indeed. Wander around, have a great time. Thank you. And of course, one of the things I love about Expos is the shopping. They've got all kinds of Western wear for sale here, all of these boots. I don't know, I've got my eye on some pink ones back here that are pretty cute. Okay, and if you're looking for the place to buy the saddle for your horse so you can ride in style, this is the place to come. We've got traditional, we've got some, looks like they're customized saddles over there, some that are more ornate, kind of blinged up. So get it up, get it up! Hey, if you're looking for a horse and buggy, got them here, nice comfy seat. Got a whole bunch of different styles here. One back there looks like a, that looks like something out of a wedding. Okay, so dinner's ready. I've always wanted to do that. So with this, I'm going to transform into the rhinestone cowgirl. <laughs> I love it. These are so cute. Aren't they beautiful? Look, I just helped make a sale. So you think I'd make it in the Wild West with this purse? I think so. So how much fun for the little kids? Something they don't get to do every day. She's practicing roping the steer and pulling it along on wheels our future cowgirls of America right here. Well, the Novi Equestrian Expo has turned me a little bit country. And whether you're new to the equestrian world or a lifelong horse lover, this expo is sure to offer some good old-fashioned fun. things to see and do in Metro Detroit this month and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. Let the ultimate feel-good show entertain you at the Fisher and enjoy horsing around at the Novi Equestrian Expo. The greatest show on earth honors the Year of the Dragon and defending the caveman will make couples roar with laughter. See La Traviata, a romantic tragedy of forbidden love. Then see the Festival of Trees sparkle in Dearborn. Run a mini marathon in the parade before the parade. Then Woodward Ave gets ready for the official Thanksgiving Day Parade. Elton John picks Detroit as part of his 13-city tour. And the Nutcracker takes you to the land of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Classical meets fantasy at the DSO's Wolfgang and Wonderland. Then Noel Night takes place at 75 Midtown venues. Marvel at the astonishing Cirque Dreams Holidays. And Christmas Wonderfest moves to the Suburban Collection Showplace. 
To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. So you think you've been to a bookstore? Well, let me tell you, you haven't been to a bookstore yet until you've been to John K. King Books in Detroit. It's that landmark powder blue building at West Lafayette in the Lodge, and this place is just packed to the gills with used, rare books, books you can't find any place else, and we're going to explore it today. They've got a whole aisle here devoted to books just on Michigan. They've got Great Lakes history, maritime history. They've even got a section on Michigan cities and communities. So if you find you're still craving more Metro Detroit information after watching our show, you can come here, pull out a book on O.C. Gross Point. And John K. King Books always makes the best of lists. I mean, they run the best of Our Detroit, Metro Times, Real Detroit, the Detroit Free Press. And after all, they are the biggest reseller of used books in the country. We have over 900 categories, close to a million books. And they're spread out on four floors. Plus, we have an art annex that carries about 20,000 art books. And we have a rare book room and a rare bindings area. So we take care of the whole scope of book collecting. We started in 1965, but we were in another building downtown for 12 years. Okay. Then we moved over here. Mm -hmm. This is the old Advanced Glove Company, and it has a big mural of a glove on the corner of the building, so it's a landmark building in the city of Detroit. But now you're two buildings, actually, correct? Yes, we took over the Otis Elevator building behind us. Mm -hmm. One building is open to the public? Yes, one building is open to the public, and the other one's by appointment only. By appointment only, and that's where we're standing at, in correct. the appointment only. Correct, correct. This is our, our rare book room where we're so at. When some comes in where do they start we direct them to our directory mm -hmm. we question them try and see what they are looking for and then we set them off on their uh, journey a lot of books we have are not really available on the internet okay. so books can be found here that are uh, a lot easier to find than if you're looking on the internet plus you can see the condition of the book before you buy it on the internet you don't see any of that so this is by appointment only the rare use the rare books. This is for serious book collectors. Yes. And so what are some of the things that pe somebody might come in here searching for? Well, people come in here and they look for various things. We have mm -hmm. a signed Lincoln document here, for example. That's an original oh. signed document by Abraham Lincoln wow. that we sell. And it is for sale. Oh, for whom the bell tolls. We have an inscribed and signed for whom the bell tolls that's signed by Ernest Hemingway. Wow. And this, this caught my eye over here, too. This yes, is this is an original Edith Head costume sketch for Elkie Summer. Wow, gorgeous. Oz books, first editions. Oh, wow. Look at that. This room over here is just absolutely gorgeous. Yes. This is our, our leather bindings area where we have a large selection of hand bound books okay. and they include subjects such as literature, medical, mm -hmm. uh, history. We also have a large art annex that carries over 20,000 out of print art books. Now and is that appointment too? Is that That's uh, by appointment but it's a lot easier to get into. So this is all just all art books. Correct. This is our large art annex. Wow. It's one of the largest annexes in the country that just carries strictly out of print books. Out of print books. Everything's categorized in various disciplines. Goodness. And it goes on and on. Okay, well I also see some pieces of art, not just books down here. Is that that's all for sale too? Correct. We have all kinds of masks that we recently got in from an estate. We have paintings, original oil paintings, mm -hmm. prints. Uh, maps. <laughs> okay, Winky wants to go over next door to the real bookstore now. <laughs> so this is the main building. You walk in, you come in here and you say, oh wow, where do I start? <laughs> well, this is where everybody comes in. This uh -huh. is their introduction to our store. 
and here's Craig, one of our regular customers. Oh. Hi, Craig. So you're a regular shopper here. Yep. So what's the appeal of the bookstore to you? Volume. Volume? There are a lot of books. We have four floors and we can direct people to the sections if they need to be directed or we mm -hmm. have salespeople that can help people. Now do you have somebody on every floor? Correct. We have a floor manager on every floor mm -hmm. and they are able to help confused and bewildered <laughs> customers. <laughs> a lot of people get overwhelmed when they come in here because mm -hmm. of the gigantic, enormous collection of yeah. books we have here. Yeah. Well, it looks like you're, kind of, you're, you're really busy. Yeah. You're really busy, yeah. Each floor yes. has 6,000 square feet. Full of books. F crammed full of books. But they're in order, in subject order, and most of the time alphabetical. Oh, okay. Over here we have a large collection of World War II books. And we have early printings, things that were printed in the 17th and 18th centuries down here too. When you go to old bookstores, sometimes you walk in and everything's just scattered mm -hmm. as if they were shot out of a shotgun. Mm -hmm. And here everything is neat and, and, and ordered. So up on the third floor. Yes, we're on the third floor. Out of breath, but we're here. <laughs> Half the floor here is devoted to fiction. Oh, okay. So we have approximately 30,000 uh, fiction titles. As a bookstore established as a used and rare bookstore, continue to hold these until the right person comes because you just want to be prepared. We have a lot of people that come in special from around the country yeah. and from foreign countries that come and stop here special. Wow. Okay, so we are on the fourth floor. I like the um, interior design. You can look back and see things from the 80s and back what was in fashion. 50s, <laughs> back to the 50s. Things that are becoming fashionable again. <laughs> you do appraisals as well, correct? Yes, as a service to the community, we provide free verbal appraisals. Wow, that's a great service. <laughs> We've been doing it for dozens of years. The Ernest Hackle book is not a first edition. It's probably a five, ten dollar book, okay? Sonnets from the Portuguese in leather, which makes it a lot nicer. It's probably a $20 book because it's in leather. If it was the same thing in cloth, it'd be a 5 to $10 book. So yet another little room. I like all these little nooks and crannies. You just don't know what you're going to find here. Yeah, first floor is <laughs> full of nooks and crannies. <laughs> well, John, I want to thank you so much thank for taking you. me around, showing me off. And I think I'm going to go explore on my own and see what I can find. Good. I'm glad you came. <laughs> Good. Well, I just love the feeling of this old building. It's so romantic, old world feeling, yet it's here in the present day. And this building was actually built around the turn of the century. And as was mentioned, it used to be a glove factory, so that's why it has that warehouse feeling. But it's cozy. This entire area, this, this other room coming up is devoted to art. So besides the art annex and the other building, this area is devoted to art books from around the world. You can find pretty much anything you're looking for. They've got all the world famous artists covered here. Just look at this, it's just mind boggling. Here we go, travel. Well, you know I'm a big travel buff, like to go all over Metro Detroit. But I also have another interest, Southern Italy and Here's a man, now I'm looking for, hmm, I wonder what Southern Italy was like back turn of the century. Came to the right place, it's right down this aisle here. These are our travel books. Okay. And Italy is in this section here. Uh, a good choice would be the Baedeckers, the famous series of travel books. Uh, this one looks to be probably turn of the century. 1893. Very good. And the neat part about these is they have lots of maps inside. Lots of maps from, wow, oh look at And here's Napoli. Naples. And old Napoli, wow. We have the sense of organization. That's really my job, is to make sure that things stay organized so that when people come in, we can actually find what we have. Mm -hmm. We want them to have kind of the old world experience of right. going to a bookstore and browsing around, but we don't want them to be so overwhelmed because we're so large right. that they can't find what they hope to exactly. find here. Well, Deborah, I have been looking for this particular book for my father for some time, and you had it here. Oh, great. I'm glad you found what you're looking for yeah. in the store today. Let's see. Wow. Only 318. 318? 318. What a bargain. Tax, you can't beat that. 
Well, I found the occult section where they've got books on dreams, ESP, ghosts. And speaking of ghosts, at one point they claimed that the fourth floor of this building was haunted. Lights going on and off, all kinds of crazy things. But fortunately, we don't have to worry about that anymore. You can come here. Rest assured, it's ghost free. But as they mentioned, there's over 900 categories. So if you want to read about ghosts, you can do that. And since I found my nice little cubby hole, I think I'm going to pull this out and see if they really do exist. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Veronica Vance. And remember, if you'd like more information on any of the places we visited, log on to visitdetroit.com. So until I see you next time, go out and explore on your own and discover the D. To learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com.